Well, hey, how y'all doing? Um, I am uh, putting this on the video because while we were doing this, the, um, the video that we normally use, which is pretty high quality, we ran out of space on the phone because we've got some other stuff on there. And so the video that you're going to get today is, is going to be more this quality from our webcam than our normal quality. And for that, we apologize. We're doing the very best we can. Thank you again for, um, for, for, for being with us on this journey and being supportive. We appreciate the comments. We appreciate the, the subscribes. Please share with your friends. Um, again, we hope you like this, this episode, this segment. Um, feel free to comment. Uh, feel free to share with your friends. We appreciate you. We appre again, appreciate you being with us on this journey. And we apologize for the quality. I apologize for the quality of the video. Good morning. Good morning. Good Monday, chilly morning from um, from Tampa. Uh, chilly out. Yeah, it's forty seven degrees. And that's actually that's freezing from where we are. I'm just saying that is freezing from where we are. It is like holy crap. Um, because it's kind of a humid, wet, cold. That was my foot hitting something on the floor. Oh. That's what that noise was. Y'all didn't hear that, did her. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's awful. It's clammy. It, uh, because it rained all day all yesterday. Day. I mean, and not just little just rain. Like, it actually rained all day long, like sixteen hours or something. Yes. It rained. It just I saw that on the news the last night, and it's just everything's wet. And, Cold and, and awful, but it's <clears> actually <throat> I I walked this morning and it's actually w once I got heated up and everything uh, it felt good. Well, the sun's out right now, so and and, and that, that was just from yesterday. The sun wasn't out. The sun's out. Mm -hmm. uh, so now it's it's nice. Out. Now it's 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 going to be a, a high of sixty something. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, if you're we Florida people, just don't we don't like do it. Well, we don't like it. Cold. But. That's all. That's all we hear. <laughs> I thought we're not in Minnesota or Boston. But it's really not that bad. It's awful. <laughs> we don't have snow. We don't have snow. And ice and all that other stuff that, that northern the, That y'all have sucks. Um, and y'all know it sucks, which is why when you get old, you move here. <laughs> and drink all our water and clog up all our roads. Uh, anyway. Um, cause accidents. Yeah. Drive, and, drive slow in the left lane. That's what, that's what y'all do when y'all come here. Don't know how to drive in rain. Yeah, put your flashers on in the rain. What the hell <laughs> <laughs> does that? Anyway, um, yesterday, as I put in the um, in, in in the show notes on Facebook, and I will do the very same thing on YouTube. Uh, we had the um, the the opportunity uh, to be interviewed for our church newsletter uh, that comes out every month, um, and um, it rolls around with different subjects every month. Uh, we've done uh, one on praise and worship. We've done, they've done one on friendship. They, I mean, they, any number of subjects. And we, and they rolled around to marriage relationships. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are one of the, I guess, including Pastor and Marissa, one of the, and and Ralph and Lynn, uh, one of the uh, couples that have been married in the church the longest. Yes. And so they were interested, or the, the person doing the newsletter was interested in, what we thought on a couple of. Um, we won't go over all of the topics. No, this is just to not spoil. This is just Catherine's a pre. This is just report, a. This but... is just a preview, um, and um, on YouTube, this is just a preview, and the and the actual um, interview it, uh, we'll put up when the newsletter comes out. And if you're interested in getting in, in getting a copy of the newsletter um, when it comes out, we'll, I'll, I'll put that link. <clears throat> pardon me. In the description box on our page on our page so that way you'll you know you'll have access to the whole you'll have access to the whole thing the whole interview will be, be put up after the newsletter comes out that makes sense obviously right so this is just a preview of the kind of things we were asked and um preview of our answers it won't be our exact answers because we didn't script our answers and we're not going to read them to you <laughs> because that would be stupid <clears throat> excuse me because the thing with us is that, you know, depending on the day and the time and you ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Things can change. Well, yeah, things, things have a tendency to change. And that's what relationships, especially marital relationships, they things change. 
you don't stay the same. And if you do, you're probably doing it wrong. Something's wrong. All right. What was one, what was one of the one of the questions we went over? There were like ten or twelve. There were there so were a lot. So when we say we're only going to do two or three, we're only giving you a, a, a snippet, a snippet, a really small snippet. So one of them was, "What is the best technique for overcoming communication failures?" Which was a tremendous question. Um, and you know, we've talked about communication here on you know on, on the program before. Um, and how important it and how, how important it is. Uh, do you remember what you said? <laughs> Excuse me, I'll be right back. All right, there you go. Um, not word for word. Well, no, because it wasn't scripted. So. But I do remember what you said. What did I say? You said communication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Y'all know at this point, I'm a pretty simple guy. Yeah, the most important thing about communication is actually communicate. A failure, communication failure. Yeah, it's actually and 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 I really agree with that because to 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 avoid failures in communication, what do you have to do? Yes, you have to communicate. So, and I'm not saying that we are perfect at that. I don't think anybody is. No, we're uh, <laughs> I mean, unless you can read each other's minds and you're okay with that. A lot of the um. What what men want? What do you say? Hmm. What women want? <laughs> what women want the? What men want the black version of what what, what men want? Mm -hmm. <laughs> y'all like that? Y'all can. But um, focus, Debbie, focus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's one of my superpowers. Back to uh, the Squirrel. question that the failure is uh, when it fail when it fails. Sorry. The best thing is to to get on top of communicating to your partner exactly what you're upset about. And um, in the beginning of our marriage, I was horrible at this because, you know, when you get married, when you think in a marriage as a fairy tale thing, and you know, you find the perfect soulmate, and you he's gonna know you, he's gonna know what you want, and and before you even ask for it. You, you know, <laughs> only God can do that. <laughs> and for most, but, and for most folks, God doesn't do it quickly enough. <laughs> only God can do that. Uh, but you expect your spouse to be able to know stuff. Well, you did this and they, and, and most of the time, especially men, they're in, they're in la la land. Like this. Ladies, they walking around. How are you so, doing? So dopey. They have no idea. <laughs> and, and you have on? to you have to communicate to them exactly what you want them to do. Yeah, be specific, please. Yeah, be specific. Not that people will do exactly what you want them to do, but they won't do anything if they don't know that they're supposed to do something. Um, and uh, I, I remember what else I said. I think that that import that what's important about communication is, is is knowing your spouse well enough to know how to communicate to them. Mm -hmm. um, that has to do with. Um, how specific you are, that it has to do with your tone, that it has to do with timing. Um, <clears throat> teaching is a lot more effective than telling. Telling somebody to do something is not teaching them or instructing them. And sometimes, unless they're on fire, if you tell somebody when they're on, they're on fire, that may be helpful. But telling them, but but teaching them or instructing them on what to do to not be on fire is a lot more helpful. Uh, I know that's a bizarre analogy, but um, the idea is that that you can't think that just because you told somebody something that in, they remember in the way that you understand, understand something it. means that it, that that's going to be effective. Just because that's what you would have done, and that's how you would have operated, and that's how you would have reacted. What you're going to do is find yourself frustrated because of the upbringing. Everybody grew up in different environments, and um, things that that you know you take as being a sensitive thing to your partner may be oh, why are you, nothing. Why, why are you, you upset about, about that? that? And you never communicated to him that well. That's what my dad used to do. And that's that's one of the things that I communicate didn't communicate well on. It's because my dad, I, I he, he was not the perfect husband. He was a perfect father-in-law, though. 
but he did things. <laughs> he did things Alex, for my mom and treated her like Alex she Scott was, was a, a queen. Was a perfect father-in-law. And he would awesome. do things for her, you know, like, and 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 he's a lot better at it now. But like gas and oil and all that stuff with the car and all of that. She would every morning, every Monday morning, her car was full and it ran and he went out and he heated up her car before she got to go, had to go. So I, I expected my, I expected Willie to be the same way, but he. I didn't grow up like that. He didn't, I didn't see have, that same kind of thing have, in a marriage. I didn't have any concept of that at all. None. Zero. Uh, you know, frankly, we moved to Central Florida uh, when I was seven. So there weren't those really chilly mornings where uh, my mom's car needed warming up. Uh, my, my dad, my, my dad did work on cars. Um, I didn't, I didn't grow up working. I didn't grow up working on vehicles. Um, so I never really, I don't have any really co any concept of that. And, and I didn't realize that it was an expectation for Deborah. I didn't. I didn't really understand that that it was an expectation. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know that it's an expectation, how can you meet it? And if it isn't communicated, all you can do is fail. So it, you know, it it, it, it it sort of put me in, in an unenviable position, um, kind of an unfair position. It's like you expect this, and I I don't I don't know what that, no I don't know what the hell you're talking about. What you know? Because and 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 I think it had a lot to do, you know, in that particular instance with, you know, in the times that you know that your father grew up, mm -hmm. that's the kind of stuff they did. And Obviously, the woman stayed at home. I'm not as old. Took care of the home. This is not a weird relationship where I'm as old as old enough to be her father, unless I was like mm -mm, at four years old, <laughs> and I was not. Um, so, the idea is. That I didn't grow up like I didn't grow up like that, and I don't think a lot of people in my generation grew up like that either. What we grew up with is that there's self-service gas, and everybody put gas in their own damn car, right? You, you know, we grew up with "You've come a long way, baby." You know that's and, and, and that's how I, we grow up. And I can bring home the bacon. No, 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 fry it up, up in the, the pan. pan. You can put gas in your own damn car. <laughs> what you saw you, Friday when you got home, you had no gas, <laughs> which was crazy. It was crazy because you because your dad grew up in a time where you go to the gas station and, and somebody the, else put gas, put gas, in, the gas in the car. It wasn't yeah. like he was out there, you know, with a with a mask on, putting gas in the car. Somebody else did. Uh, so it was it, that. That's just that's just an example. Um, you have to communicate for what you want, and you have to communicate in the style by which your partner is going to accept and understand. So that was one of that was one of the questions. Um, again, you can watch the preview. I mean, this is the preview of it. You, when the newsletter comes out, I think in a, in a week, in a couple of weeks, uh, we will post um, the full thing, and that you'll be able to hear all. You'll be able to hear the question, and you'll be able to hear our answers, and have access to the newsletter. Because I'll put a link in the in the description. So. Uh, that's just that's just one. So you know that this was good. That the, that these questions were good stuff. Okay, well, we'll do we'll do a couple. What time is it? Yeah, we'll do a couple more. Um, when when things get hard, how do you keep the relationship afloat? And we said to you guys, and we said that we said in our interview what good we morning, said. Morning, Marvin and Jesse. What we said to you, we said to you guys, uh, and Nikki. And Nikki uh, what we said before is that you have to value the relationship. I want to say, did, did, did I say that? Yes. You have to value the relationship above everything else. Is whatever hard right now or difficult, what you're going through, is that bigger than a relationship? And if it isn't, you got to put that in perspective. Then you have to go ahead and attack whatever or deal with whatever the situation is. But is it bigger than the relationship? Is it more important than the relationship? Um, Do you want to be right, or do you want peace? That's my whole thing. Because sometimes, you know, you can be right. You can be right, but there may not be peace in your home. Yeah. So, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Is your relationship more important than being right? Yeah, I, I didn't think that in the beginning. No, <laughs> that's I was gonna win. I'm a winner. 
and I'm going to be right. And I still deal with that sometimes. And but, I've been married 31 years, and, and, and did you see my face during that time? <laughs> Gosh, did you see my face? Did you see how it seemed like I was somewhere else? <laughs> did, you, did you see that? It seemed like I was somewhere else entirely. Like, like, where'd he go? I want to be right. Where'd he go? Yeah, I know. I know. And now I have a partner in crime in my son sometimes. <laughs> And we and it's kind of unfair. We get we do gang up on him sometimes. Yes, like last night about that ring doorbell. <laughs> I'm gonna let y'all do it though. I was thinking last night when I was uh, working on the YouTube channel at four in the morning that maybe I'd do it, but I ain't gonna do it. I'll let y'all do it. Um, I said we would. I know. And there it is, sitting on the counter, the, staring into the kitchen, wondering. We- Wondering we, when it's actually going to be able to do its job. We bought a ring doorbell. We bought a ring doorbell. And and he wants to put it up. So I had an opinion. A bad thing. <laughs> no, it's a good thing. <laughs> and and I don't know if you know what a ring doorbell is, but it's Yes, you do, because you're because, because if you're if you're on YouTube, you don't live in a you don't live, you know what, in in, in, in a cage. This is our ring doorbell. Yes, and and what it does is has a camera. That I moved it. Yes, <laughs> it has a camera, and and you know because we we had an incident where somebody uh, stole my crap off my door. Yes, something was stolen from the door. So we um, and that's really bad here in Tampa. I don't know we're if in it top, is in where you live. We're in the top ten yes. for porch pirates. Porch pirates, and uh, so. We're expecting to have it re-delivered, and we know that we need to have a camera out there. And this is just the first step of, you know, getting a camera up and getting the. I may be a, it may be a pit bull, maybe a rabbit pit pit bull. We can make, we can make him like, like eat, pit bulls, like but a, you all don't want like make him bulls. have some like uh, toothpaste in his mouth so he like is foaming at his mouth all the time. <laughs> But it's to help prevent porch pirates. Hi, <laughs> Deborah Campbell. You know, we just, you know, we just. Anyway, so there was a, there was a. Um, I was going to put it up, sort of next to the existing doorbell. The existing doorbell is really old, and it's painted the same color it's house, cracked. and it's crap. It's just old, and you, and you can't see it, and it does work, if you really push it. Um, most people who come to the house don't use it. Um, and so I think it and you should be, just be removed. And you can barely, and you can barely, you can barely see it. Uh, and put the other one, put this new one on top of it. It would just, and I thought it'd just be easier to put the new one, to, to drill the hole, put the, the new one up. Um, so um, my son and um, his mother uh, had the same opinion, and they were going to win, and they won. <laughs> but we have to put it up. Yeah. So and and my son is. It's pretty technical. He said, fine. Well, this is. So we're going to do it today. Is, this is a mechanical construction thing. I did the technical part because I did it here at the table. Yes. <laughs> it's hooked up. It's ready to go. So, and, and we will put it together. Even if it's tonight, when I get back from work, we will do it. Or yeah. We'll do it today. We will talk about this next Monday when we see you. <laughs> And let you know how, how that it if I reach over here and grab it and show it to you again. <laughs> no, we, we, we it's still good. here. Portal ring. Now you know that me and Alex are good as a team. We get together, we have a project, we get it done. <laughs> they, they do. So we'll so we'll 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 see about that. Um I'm just gonna wait. I'm I I, I fought the urge. To, to to get up and or, or actually go outside last night when it was miserable and just do it um but there needs to be some drilling in in, uh, in you know in into the wall to get it done so um so that's what that, that's one of those things you know you're gonna be right you gonna be right but it, it just makes more it looks better on on by the it door doesn't make any, it, it won't make any difference it, it looks better although i've seen it you see what i'm saying now I could argue this point forever, and here's what we're failing on communication. And, here. and here, and, and these kind of and these kind of discussions happen in your house too. Now, and I could have just put it up where I wanted it. Mm-hmm. I could have. I could have yesterday. I could have just 
put it up. I could have just gone back there, got the drill, screw, 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 and it would have been up, and 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 the discussion would have been over at that point. It did not, because I would have, in my mind, been right, but I'd have been wrong. Right. I'm not saying it's the wrong way, but it just looks better. Well, again, looking better is a, is a subjective term, but but you guys understand what I'm saying. I could have just done it. I could have just I could just grabbed the stuff and just said, "No, this this is where it's going." Ramp, 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 and done it, and thought that I was right, but not had peace. Mm-hmm. I could have. I could have believed in myself. I'm a winner. I'm going to win this, and you know I'm going to win this by force. It's in there. Now, done. I won. Dad power. I could have done that. I did not. It's still sitting there. You saw it. Uh, It will be up this week, and we will let you know how it comes (laughs) out. Yeah, I will. I'll let you know. I'll vlog all week. We'll take pictures of it. Go. Oh, look, there it is. Um, But But when things get hard, how do you keep the relationship afloat? A lot hitting the the reset button a lot. You have to hit the reset button, start all over you again. You have to forgive. You have to forgive. And and it's tough to forget. But you do have to forgive. That's required as Christians that we're required to forgive people. So I mean if you if you'll forgive a stranger from from cutting you off in traffic, why wouldn't you why wouldn't you forgive the trespasses of someone that you've had children with? on some thing that they've done in the house or not done in the house or forgotten to do. Or didn't put up like you want it. Or didn't put up like you want it. <laughs> didn't do it like you thought it should be done. Um, you know you know what, again, if we're, if we're driven to forgive someone who who does the horse, who's a stranger, who does something to you out there, but you can't, you can't let go of you said you were going to do the dishes and you didn't do the dishes and I always do the dishes and why didn't somebody else in this house do the dishes? And when the, the fact of the matter is, I just, I'm sorry, I just forgot. I just were you quoting forgot. Me? <laughs> you see the face? Did you see the face? I just went away for a second. Uh, you know, um, you, know you, you know what I'm saying? So you have to, I mean, you, you, you have to be able to Forgive the person, and on. and the, and and frankly, the quicker you do that, the quicker you can move on because you can't move on unless you forgive the person. You know, um, that's really how that's really how you get um, through hard spots. Um, you can't get through hard spots by by holding on to ought to holding on to anger to holding on to grudges. Uh, and- grudges. You, and you're not going to sleep with me because you you didn't do what I asked you to do. And I, you know, ladies, how you withhold. So <laughs> using the sex as a punishment <laughs> or the lack of sex as a punishment or lack of intimacy as, as, as a punishment. Um, because all that does, all that really does is exacerbate problems and cause other problems in your relationship. Yes. So because one leads to another and another and another and then you and then, have divorce. And then it has and it, and it goes back and I'm so I'm so thankful that I got that revelation. Because if you go back, if if you go back through it all, it always says how did this start? Mm-hmm. And was that thing that was this big was it worth the whole was it worth the whole thing? No. Most times most times no. Most times, no. Because uh, I was watching the mans, and they were talking about relationships and stuff. Because they do that, and they were. And she said the biggest argument that they had was over a tuna fish sandwich. Oh, how it blew up and just rolled to the next thing, to the next thing, the next thing, and then suddenly people are sleeping in different rooms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like what the hell? Over, <laughs> over a tuna. What are y'all mad about? <laughs> Tuna, tuna fish. And and unfortunately, we ha- I have been angry enough about dishes that we have argued like that. That's why I asked him, was he quoting me? Because I, you know, 
you know, sometimes you get tired. It's the same thing. I cook, I clean, I do this, I work, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, but now the dish issue is not an issue. I do the our weekly cooking and stuff on Sunday evenings. And when I'm done, I say, the kitchen is yours. We work it out. We work it out. We work it out. It's just, and for me, it's not a big enough, you know, it's not a big enough deal to have a, have a fight about. Uh, I, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know anybody who likes doing dishes. Oh, I love doing dishes. Pastor likes doing dishes. Yeah. Our pastor loves, likes doing dishes. He says it's therapeutic. It's therapeutic, whatever. <laughs> I love the man, but he's got some quirks. <laughs> he's got some quirks but you know so but it's it, you know it's not you know it's not big it's, it's it's not like it's affecting my manliness or anything and just all right go over and uh wash dishes because the thing is is when i'm cooking i i clean the kitchen pretty much because i i'm not a messy cooker i don't like to leave stuff when i'm cooking i clean as i go along and so it's not that big of a deal for him to no, I don't have to go in there, and it's like forty. I mean, it's not not forty two pans stacked to the ceiling or pots stacked to the ceiling or anything like that. It's it's usually the dishes that we just use around here. So it's not it's not that big. It's not it's not that big. An, it's not that big a deal, and it's not not big a big enough deal for me to to balk about it. So we just go in and knock it out and be done with it. So what was your your question? You wanted to choose um, if you were going to give marriage advice to somebody. What's the best marriage advice you could give to them? Don't steal mine. <laughs> That's going to be the well, thumbnail. You, you go first. Marry the right person. <laughs> Marry the right person. I got I got that from actually um, one of the pastors in one in 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 in, in, in our in, in our starter church um, up in Chicago, Pastor Rob Thompson. Um, who said that that was the best marriage advice he could give to anybody is to marry the right person. And that was the, the simplicity of that, uh, com combined with the power of that, is stuck with me. If you don't marry the person, I mean, the right person, marriage will be one of two things. <laughs> it will be, if marriage can be either heaven or it can be absolute hell. Um, and it can be hell if you marry the wrong person. And so you have to be fairly confident that you're involved in, in, in a relationship. And we've had these discussions here on the channel about being equally yoked and all these things. We talk about communication, we talk about um, dating, we talk about all these things. Um, <clears throat> hopefully that you can figure out that you're, that you're actually marrying the right person and marrying for the right reasons. And, and <clears throat> what I thought was the most important thing, and I've always said this, is that be friends with that person before you go into a marital relationship with them because how you know your friends and you know them well well you think you do until they murder somebody you <laughs> go i never thought that he would he always seemed so nice can you imagine why he killed that whole family with a spoon but but you know what Big i'm saying you spoon. get to know somebody by hanging out with them being you know in group settings and how they how they treat other women and how they talk to talk about their mom you know if you hang out at their house and you see them with their mom and and how they treat their mother and their sisters and um it's the same thing with the the girls you know if they treat the other friends and then all this stuff and you see but if you see her you know she's they, she's, she's not dating you but you all are friends but she's snippy but she's, and ugly to her friends and backbiting and and you know what always doing stuff on the sly uh maybe that should be a clue mm -hmm. maybe so that should be, be a clue. friends with that person a true friend before you get into a relationship yeah yeah get to try to get to know people spend some time now now neither of us are, are fans of the 14-year engagements <laughs> you see some of these some of these people they've been engaged for like nine years and they're 35 like um, y'all just doing that so y'all can have sex right <laughs> <laughs> because if y'all not doing that just to have sex something is hard somebody don't want to get married <laughs> somebody don't want to get married <laughs> they just they gave you a ring to shut you up right uh so not a fan of that 
but I'm also not a fan of the whirlwind. Woohoo! I met you on the cruise, and now we now we hitched. Not a fan of that either. That's you know that's when you marry the seaside strangler and don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Um, and then you find out that they had three other wives that they did that just that disappeared <laughs> under <laughs> under interesting circumstances. Yeah, so on the honeymoon, yeah. or something. So 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 so, so they get idea, to know people. Yeah, get to know them, first. and that makes it easier to marry the right person. Yeah, that makes it actually makes it possible mm-hmm. to marry the right person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you're a person who you know what, who is a person of faith who who goes to church, have those conversations. Or try to have those conversations um, to see if you know what if you're going to be equally yoked in that sense, or if there's going to be <clears throat> a big problem. Sometimes there may, it, it, sometimes you may not have the you know the same opinion right away, and you may not walk on and lock think about it. But you're not that like, you're not that far away. So, but you can only do that if you get to, if you actually get to know people. And spend some time with them beforehand before you decide to um, to run down the aisle. And you know, he said that about being in ch- meeting people in the church and stuff like that. But a lot of times, that may not be the best place to meet. People. Well, it might not be the people. It, it there might not be anyone at the time there that's that's good for you because everybody puts their base their or try or should anyway. People are being fake when they're in church. A trying lot to put of their best be, best face on, you know, mm-hmm. when they're in church, or, or at least they should. Good God! You can't go into church being awful. <laughs> sometimes you, you know, that that some uh, a lot of people are going to church to try to meet somebody, and when they meet them, they no longer a Christian. Wolves, we call mm-hmm. them men. Wolves who sweep into the church. Women do it too. To, do they really? Yes, I women know. are bad. Women can be bad too. Mm-hmm. Don't just put it on men. No, come on, guys, who sweep just sweep sweep into the church to find a young church. Young, found the young church girl so she can cook and clean and darn his socks. Uh, okay, nobody darns socks anymore. Okay, I'm gonna have to. Oh, hang on a second. I'm having a, okay. a technical technical thing. difficulty. Oh, okay, I, I fixed it because that's what I do. I fix stuff. Um, you don't well, know. Yeah, so that means it's probably time to go. Yeah, if the camera stops. Yeah. Yeah. I, File get the file got too big and it's not enough space. Okay, well I'm gonna have to do something else. That works out. Yay me. Um. Anyway, we got to get out of here. And make room for, for somebody else. Listen. Look forward to on the YouTube channel and look forward to um actually the whole interview. The whole the, the whole interview. Um. As soon as the newsletter comes out, we'll we'll post the whole interview. I think we'll and I think uh, we're only gonna post it on YouTube. So y'all gonna have to go and subs- like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yes. Like, comment, subscribe, share, see our vlogs. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff up. Um, Debbie's uh, vlog from last week, vlog set three is up. Uh, how do I know that? Because I put it up this morning at four a.m. So getting up five hours later to do this because I care about you, and she makes me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm that audible voice. Yeah, we'll tell you that story later. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, anyway, we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. So when do we see you again? Go out there and learn something, love somebody. And for goodness sake, y'all take care take of yourself. Take care. Love you. When we see you, when we see you. Peace. Peace. What? Nothing. I'm hitting the button. I'm trying to hit the button.